Hello and welcome to Sullivan County 4-H Learn by Doing Outdoor Living Skills Series. And today we're going to kick off a series with this first episode on going over a few basic pieces of equipment that you should have when you're going hiking. And the type of hiking that we're going to be talking about today as far as equipment goes is a one day hike. So you hike in and you hike out the same day. If we were to do a video for the overnight hiking, it would be a lot longer and we'd talk about a lot more equipment. Today we're just going to talk about the basic equipment that you'll need to bring with you on a hike for safety reasons and also to get you started on safe hiking. So to start off, clothes. What you wear is very important when you go hiking, no matter the distance. If you have incorrect shoes on or if you're, you don't have enough clothes on where you're cold, it can make the hike not only dangerous but also just not fun because you're going to be uncomfortable the whole time. So to start off with, a good pair of shoes is really important when you go hiking. They're pretty straightforward with what you need. You need something that has really good deep treads on it to make sure that it has good gripping, especially if you might be going from walking on a pine needle path to walking across rocks. It needs to be able to accommodate for that. They should be able to breathe well and be comfortable so that you don't have any rubbing going on with your feet. So you really wanna make sure that they fit correctly. You don't wanna be halfway through a, a hike and then end up having an injury on your foot from wearing shoes that don't fit you right. So definitely make sure they have tread, they fit right, and they have some kind of ankle support. And that's really important too, because some of the trails that you might come across might have some obstacles in them, they might be a little rocky, and you don't want to continuously be rolling your ankle the whole time. So having that extra protection of your shoe supporting your ankle can really help with that. And the last thing that's pretty important is to make sure that they're waterproof. If you come across uh, an area in the woods that has some water in it, you don't want to have wet feet while you continue hiking because that can also be very detrimental to your health. So you want to make sure that your feet are well taken care of for sure when you go hiking. Especially if you hike deep in the woods, oftentimes even if it hasn't rained, you'll still find a wet spot in there. So definitely make sure they're waterproof. Moving on from shoes is socks. And it sounds silly, but socks are definitely important when you go hiking. They need to not only be breathable socks so that your feet aren't sweating again for the health of your feet, uh, they need to be breathable, but you should also wear long socks. Now, I know a lot of people don't like wearing long socks, but it's important when you go hiking. And the big reason why, there's two big reasons why it's important. The first reason is to make sure that the top part of your shoe doesn't rub against your ankle or any other part of your leg. So to give that extra bit of cushion to really make sure that you don't have any raw spots when you're hiking. And the second really big reason for the Sullivan County area is that we have ticks here very bad. We're in one of the red zones for the tick population and of course we definitely want to avoid all types of ticks but especially ticks around here that carry Lyme's disease. And having long socks in addition to your other clothes can help prevent ticks from going up your leg, up your pant leg and or make it so that they don't attach to you so when you do find them on your sock you can easily remove them from the sock and not your skin. So long socks for to fight against rubbing of your shoes and also for ticks, very important. And moving up from there is pants. Now, you should wear pants when you go hiking instead of shorts. A lot of people like to wear shorts because they think they're gonna get too hot in pants. And while that could be true, it's better to go for a pant that has a tough enough cloth where it can hold up to things like if you come across a pricker bush or if you might get snagged on something. It's better to find a, a long pants that's made from a breathable cloth that has a little bit of strength to it that you can wear as opposed to shorts. Again, to protect your legs from rocks or from pricker bushes or twigs or insects. Uh, and it also just makes it easier if your hike ends up taking longer than you anticipated and it ends up being a little later in the day and it starts to cool off or it's cooler in the woods than you thought it was going to be your having pants will help keep you more insulated than if you were to wear shorts. So definitely try to find a pant that's comfortable and is a lightweight material, breathable, so it doesn't make you hot, but can protect your legs from the elements and from bugs. Very important. Now when you're dressing to go hiking, make sure even if it's predicted to be warm, 
kind of like what I already mentioned, make sure that you wear layers. So you have a t-shirt on, and then you have something lighter, a long, lighter sleeve shirt, and then something that's even a little more heavy. Again, for really two reasons. In case your hike takes longer than you anticipate it and you end up being out a little later in the day than you thought you were gonna be so it starts to cool off. If you've been sweating all day and then you get cold from the temperature dropping, that can cause sickness. So you wanna make sure that you can protect yourself from the elements that way. And also, if you get lost in the woods and you have to wait for someone to try to come and find you guys, then having those extra clothes will definitely help you out in that kind of survival situation. And also, sometimes it's just colder in the woods than we expect it to be, especially if you go deep in the woods. So even if it's supposed to be 80 degrees outside, it might end up being 60 in the woods. And you wanna make sure that you definitely take care of your body when you go hiking. It's very important. And then the last thing to bring along with you is a hat. And hat, why? Well, mostly because of the sun. A hat can help protect your scalp from the sun, a place that really we have trouble sunscreening with traditional sun spray or suntan lotion. So definitely uh, wear a hat for sun, for bug protection, it can protect your ears, um, and it's just a very helpful thing to have too. Also, if your hike goes late, it'll help insulate your head as well because we lose a lot of body temperature through our head. So a nice hat can really be a good addition to your hiking equipment as well. So now we're going to move on to equipment that you would maybe need to carry with you. And I like to bring a backpack even on a short hike uh, because sometimes things happen and the hike is longer than you anticipated or something happens and you need a piece of equipment in here It's better to be prepared than to not be prepared. So if we talk about backpacks first This is one I just like to take on uh, Day hikes and it's soft. There's no real structure to it, but it has very supportive straps It has straps under here Which kind of go across your waist and help distribute some of the weight and then it has straps on the arm handles as well. So it's a very supportive backpack. Uh, on short hikes, I don't usually take backpacks that have any kind of framing onto them. Um, and that's kind of just a personal choice. Sometimes the framing, if you don't get the backpack fitted to you, can sit weird. And if it uh, rubs while you're hiking, then you have a different problem. So I like to go with um, softer backpacks, especially for day hikes. If I was doing an overnight hike, I would like a backpack with a little bit more structure because usually they're larger, uh, but for this purposes, this soft backpack is fine. So it's a nice lightweight backpack, so it doesn't add extra weight to your pack that's unnecessary, but it has a lot of pockets in it, so you can fit a lot of stuff in it. So I also like these straps that kind of keep everything together so it's not super bulky. So some of the things that you should carry in your backpack, of course, water. Definitely, definitely have more water than you think that you will drink. Again, the hike takes longer or you end up getting lost in the woods. Having that extra bit of water will definitely come in handy. So, first aid kit. Super, 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 super important to have a first aid kit no matter the length of hike that you think you're gonna be doing, for sure. Accidents happen all the time. Definitely have a stocked first aid kit and remember to look through your first aid kit to make sure it still has everything that you need in it before you go hiking. Make sure that your band-aids are not too old. Make sure that you have any kind of uh, antibiotic cream, anything like that, any kind of ointments, gauze, all of those things, definitely important. Some also come with extra sunscreen or bug repellent, which is great. Um, but definitely, definitely make sure that it's stopped before you go hiking. So, first aid kit, uh, sunscreen, for sure. And remember, depending on the SPF is usually how long you have to reapply it. So say if you have an SPF 15, you should be applying that every 15 minutes. Um, so make sure that you reapply and have that with you. Bug spray is a big one for sure. Um, bugs in the woods are kind of inevitable. And while normal spiders and stuff like that are there too, we're more worried about mosquitoes and making sure that we don't get bit too much. 
by our nature friends. And then this is kind of an optional thing. I like to have a little paracord bracelet also tucked in here uh, just in case I need it, but that's purely optional. And then in my other pouch, I have a camping knife. Now, make sure that an adult handles this. If you have not gone through knife safety or if you have not been uh, taught proper knife handling because you don't want to hurt yourself, but this is something that is good to have on hand again in case something happens and you end up being in the woods longer than you anticipated. I, because I'm carrying it, I like to have things that have multiple uses. So this is also a fairing rod. So this is a fire starter for me as well. So it's a camping knife. It has paracord on it that I can detach from the handle if I need any kind of cordage in a pinch and it can help me start my fires. If you do not have um, a fairing rod with your camping knife, having a box of matches in a sealed plastic bag, like a Ziploc plastic bag, is also good. Why the Ziploc? Of course, in case your backpack gets dropped in the water, you will still have dry matches. So either a fairing rod or a small box of matches, just in case you're there longer than you anticipate, is very good to have on hand. And, of course, a flashlight and a whistle. Why a whistle? In case you do get lost and people are looking for you, there's search teams out looking for you, you can whistle and help give them a direction to go in. Also, your flashlight will do that as well. So, another good thing to have on hand is a snack in your backpack, even if you're going on a short hike. So, a snack can do one of two things. If you do end up staying in the woods longer than you anticipate, it can of course be a source of food for you. But also, if you're going to be hiking for a while, or longer than you anticipate, then having that extra bit of protein and sugars and salts can help make sure that you prevent cramping and have the correct energy to make it out of the woods without any injuries. So you, wanna, you definitely don't want to be low on your sugar intake or your protein intake when you are hiking. Um, for safety reasons. Also, you should check out the area that you are going to be hiking in and carry a map. Do not rely on your cell phone when you're in a hiking situation. Uh, nine times out of ten, you won't have service deep in the woods, and if you do have service, or if you have spotty service, if your phone is continuously searching, of course you know that the battery is going to die. So do not rely on your phone to help you out in a pinch. You should always be prepared to guide yourself out. So make sure that you have a map and you familiarize yourself with the map of the trails that you will be on that day, for sure. Um, also, be sure before you leave to let someone know that isn't traveling with you. So if you're going with your parents or another adult, make sure that you let someone outside of your group know where you're going, what trail you're going on, and when you anticipate to be back. And this is very important for quick rescues. If something happens and you do get turned around in the woods and your group gets lost in the woods, stay together and those people that you let know that you're going hiking will try to check in with you when you anticipate that you would be back. If they can't get a hold of you, they'll call someone to start searching those trails for you and it will take them a lot, they'll respond a lot quicker if they know where to start looking. So for sure, for safety reasons, absolutely let someone outside of your party know where you're going, what trail you'll be on, and when you anticipate to be back. Those are very important. Remember that whatever you carry in, you have to carry out. So we've kind of gone over very, very basic things to bring with you. Of course, you can add as much other items as you want, but remember that you have to carry it in and you have to carry it out. This backpack alone with my first aid kits, my equipment in it, weighs about seven and a half pounds with just this in it and you have to carry that when you go hiking. So if you want to add something like a camera or you bring something additional luxury wise like that, just keep in mind that you have to add that poundage to your backpack. There's plenty of room in here to add more things to it if you need to, um, but just remember that you will be carrying that the whole time you'll be on your trip. So for sure, make sure you have everything you need 
and anything extra you just kind of have to weigh if you're going to want to carry it the entire time or not. Um, and of course, make sure that if you do carry in a snack and you finish it, just put your garbage in your backpack until you get off the hike and make sure to dispose of it properly. Very, very, very important for the health of the trails and the environment that you're hiking in to whatever you carry in, you carry out for sure. Okay, so that concludes just our very basic brief going over of equipment. Of course, again, this is not an exhaustive list. You can add more things to this, um, but it's pretty much just a basic getting you ready to go on a one day hike. Again, safety first, make sure that you check in and you have looked at all the trail requirements and you know your trail map well, you familiarize yourself with it, you let the appropriate people outside of your party know that you're gonna be hiking and where you're gonna be hiking and you have all your emergency equipment with you for sure. So I hope that you guys have fun gathering your equipment to get ready to go and explore the outdoors will be outside the next time that we meet so i hope that you'll join me again again for more project ideas or video content make sure you subscribe to cornell cooperative extension sullivan county facebook page instagram and youtube be sure to check out the link below for more information about sullivan county 4-h and happy hiking